Okay, so I'm going to call the Pelham School Committee meeting to order at 6.30 on May 19th, 2021. As per the governor's orders, this is a virtual meeting. So we'll go around and do roll call attendance. Ms. Hall? Hall present. Ms. Stancer? Stancer present. Mr. Menino? Menino present. And Ms. Kenny? Kenny present. As I'll mention uh, in a little bit, this may be our last virtual meeting uh, based on the governor's new orders. So uh, we'll talk about that when I do superintendent update. But uh, for now, uh, for those of you who are watching, the reason I'm calling the meeting to order is there was an, recently an election in Pelham. And every time after an election, the superintendent plays the role of chair, and I'm using that word intentionally, uh, just so that uh, we can have the nominations for the new chair. Um, and by new, it doesn't mean that it can't be the person who was before, but just it's, it's considered a new election, uh, and vice chair and secretary in this situation in Pelham. Uh, but all I'm responsible for is running the election for the chair. Uh, then we'll get on with our agenda. Um, tonight will be a brief meeting. Um, I have a town hall on vaccines, which I encourage everyone who is interested to attend. So we'll, we'll be closing up um, at 7.30. I love this little power thing I've got going on, by the way, of being chair for a little. I'm, I'm sort of like feeling my oats on the uh, chair part, but I'll be glad to give it back to whoever wants. So uh, on that note, um, is there uh, just the process is there's nominations for chairs. You can nominate yourself. You can nominate someone else. I'll accept all the nominations and then ask for people to vote on who they'd like to be chair of the Pelham School Committee. Are there any nominations for chair? I nominate Ms. Hall. Is there second. a second? Okay, see there's a second. Uh, Ms. Hall, is that amenable to you? Yes. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, the, the motion was for Ms. Hall to be the chair of the Palm School Committee. Ms. Kenny? Kenny, aye. Mr. Menino? Menino, aye. Ms. Stancer? Stancer, aye. And Ms. Hall? Hall, aye. Okay, very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, thank you, committee members. With 90 <laughs> votes, I got five times more than I did the first time I was elected. So I'm feeling I'm very good. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, committee members. With 90 <laughs> votes, I got five times more than I did the first time I was elected. So I'm feeling very good. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, committee members. With 90 <laughs> votes, I got five times more than I did the first time I was elected. So, so someone has the YouTube link on on their tab because this is uh, like that's the time delay. So there's about an eight second time gap between this and when it streams on YouTube. So I wonder if someone it seems like it went away. Okay. Um, so when it inadvertently had the YouTube link up, that's what we were most likely hearing. So since it seems quiet now, I assume it's resolved. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Um, so we should also do the other uh, committee responsibilities. Um, so regional school committee, Sarah Best. I would like to volunteer. It's not the right word. Nominate yourself? Yes. Okay. That is the right word. Nominate myself. I have been on the region for the past year, and I would like to continue on there as uh, we have some unfinished business, and uh, I also have a child now in the region. I second that. I'd like to nominate Ms. Spencer, uh, uh, Ms. Dancer. All right. we, uh, I should probably know this. Can we do this as, as well? Are there any other nominations, first of all? Okay. Can we do this as one? Just a motion? Okay. So I move um, that... Sarah Bess and Margaret uh, continue on the Regional School Committee. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, any further discussion? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Sarah Bess. Uh, Kenny, yes. <laughs> I have confidence in you. Keep going. <laughs> uh, Ron. Manino, aye. Margaret. Stancer, aye. And Brenda. Brenda, aye. Okay. And Hall, aye. Um, okay, and then none of the others we need to vote for. So I always offer up if anyone wants to represent the collaborative or represent Pelham on the collaborative board. That's what I thought. Okay, 
Um, all right, next up is approving the minutes. We have- Ms. Hall, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I think vice chair and secretary probably, unless I missed that. Oh, no, you didn't miss it. I just, okay, that's right. Our, so our current vice chair is Margaret, or previously, and secretary Ron, is that right? I think so. Okay. Yeah, just just for everyone, you know, the secretary's role is not to take minutes. Uh, the secretary's role is that they serve on Union 26, uh, Supervisory Union 26, along with three members from the Amherst School Committee and three members from the Pelham School Committee. The vice chair's primary responsibilities are, if the chair is absent, to do what the chair does in terms of running a meeting, things like that. Okay. I nominate myself oh. as secretary. Okay. Okay, nomination for Ron as secretary. Any other nominations for secretary? Okay. Um, I second that. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Sarah Best. Kenny, aye. Ron? Menino, aye. Brenda? Barlow, aye. Margaret? Mar Stancer, aye. And Hall, aye. And then for vice chair, is there a nomination? Um, I'll nominate myself unless somebody else wants to do it. No, all right, I second that nomination. Any other vice chair nominations? All right, then we'll do a roll call vote for Margaret as vice chair, Sarah Best. Kenny, aye. Ron? Medino, aye. Brenda? Barlow, aye. Margaret? Stancer, aye. And Hall, aye. Okay. I think we are done with that part. Mike, did I miss anything else? No, okay. Um, all right, now we can move on to the approval of the minutes. First up, we have the March 11th meeting. Um, any questions, comments, edits on those minutes? Margaret. I think on both minutes that Principal Whiting Jones should be added as an attendee. Oh, yes. Agreed. Um, and I think on the March 11th, could Dr. Slaughter also be added because he participated. I don't know if he was there all the time, but he was there. Um, yep. Yeah, certainly for the budget stuff. Yep. Okay. okay. And um, on in the same minutes on the second page, the paragraph, second paragraph, since Pelham is not a Title I school, on the second line, it says is a school with a population of large low income students. I think large and population need to be inverted. Yes. A large population of low income students. Yes, thank you. And I have one more on the, the next set of minutes. Um, can we pause on that and just so we can, we'll approve these and vote on them and yeah. then go to the next ones. Okay. Yep. Anything else on uh, Sarah Beth? Um, so I have a couple. Um, so on number four, uh, the they weren't lower. Hold on, let me, sorry. I should have had this pulled up previously. Um, do, do, do. Oh. All right. Maybe someone else should go first and I will pull this up while I try to find it. Sorry. No, that's okay. Any other uh Brenda, go ahead. This is just more of a typo, but on that on that number four, um, on that fourth paragraph, since Pelham is not a Title I school, I think it's his title, comma, one school. Oh, yeah. would say title one school, comma. Yes. Just okay. Yes, agreed. Thank you. Yeah. Sarah Bess, are you ready or should I see if anyone else? Take a minute. Okay.
Sorry. Okay. Not so, um, all right. So I, uh, let's see, I think, so in number four, there, uh, Dr. Slaughter was talking about the budget implications and there, uh, we were talking about the, um, Oh, uh, my notes have something about the rural reef grant that maybe we want to add something about that in there, which helps prevent the loss of one of the full-time paras. Um, I don't know, maybe the 85% was, so in, in, in B, um, I had written down that it was 88% returning to per, in person. So I don't know if that's, uh, you know, it's 3%, maybe it's like a happy kit or something. Um, and then, it mentions that there's some reshuffling going on, which we might just want to clear up as it's the kids that are remaining remote are moving, are being absorbed into the Amherst remote classes rather than um, our students being shuffled into different classes, just, just for some, some clarification. Um, and then also in there, it talks about the screening capabilities and the bandwidth. Um, I, I think maybe if we just add something that says that it's the bandwidth of the internet there rather than um, you know, um, just, just for yes. clarification. Because right. um, uh, it was, uh, and then let's see. I wasn't sure what the K-1 modifications were in that last, you know, K-1 grades will be adjusted with the K-1 modifications. I wasn't sure what that was referring to. Um, and then... I think on, the, on that one then should be, I actually don't remember. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything written down about K-1 modification, so I'm not sure what it was, Okay, what I it was referring to. So maybe, maybe just scratch it. I, I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And that was all I had for this one. Okay. Great. All right. Any other comments on March 11th? Okay. Um, I move to approve the March 11th minutes as amended. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Sarah Best. Any aye. Ron? Ron, you're on mute. I just want to. Let me know why. Thank you. Brenda? Barlow, aye. Margaret? Stancer, aye. And Hall I. Okay. Um, next up, we'll do the April 14th minutes. Margaret, I know you had a comment that I asked you to hold. Do you want to start? Sure. Again, I think we need to add Principal Whiting Jones to the list of attendees. Yeah. Um, and this was the one. Oh, now am I all messed up? No, three, two, I'm sorry, that. Okay, one, sorry, I've got myself mixed up here too, two. Just so eager to do this, you know, two, three. Um, I just want a typo under the school choice update. Um, about halfway through the paragraph. Total number of school choice students, including perspectives is 40. I think it should be prospectives. Uh, yes, I had that at it as well. Okay. I think that's that and, and I, yeah, that's all I have. Okay. Sarah Bess? Uh, okay. So I have my other packet up. I can try to be more succinct. Okay, so in, um, let's see, in the superintendent updates, 
Um, I had that it was going smoothly with the buses and the pickups and the drop-offs, that they were not challenging. And being a parent that has done both the bus and a drop-off situation, I am super impressed. So I think we need to make sure that it's in there, that it's it's actually going really well and it's very organized. Um, and then um, in the last paragraph, it says that our numbers from different sources uh, regarding how much COVID money, it was from zero to 190,000, not uh, 100,000. Um, in principles update, um, I have that it was all of the uh, you know specials in the woods, which included music, it just R and P are listed. Um, and the further down in there, there is um, the next, it's the uh, open sci science uh, ed grant. Um, and let's see. And then I think the last sentence about Ms. Hall asked if there are any data on positive cases was actually happened under the next, um, like under new and continuing business, not up there, not in the Principal Whiting Jones update. Uh, yeah, you know what, hearing you say that, you're right, that is my recollection as well, I missed that. Yeah, yep. I think it was later, it was later on. Um, yeah, thank you. Let's see. And let's see. Um, I also had that, uh, you know, Dr. Morris went out of his way to call out Principal Whiting Jones on how uh, her right sized approach was really great for the students entering back into the classrooms and focusing on social emotional and then gradually re entering into a focus on academics. And I think we probably should recognize that as well because, what? as a parent, she's done a really good job with those pieces. <laughs> um, and I was going to make tea and then I didn't. Let's see. I. Um, and then. I think it was Brenda that asked about the safety protocols. Um, and then let's see, scrolling down a little bit longer, further into the school choice updates. I have that there were 19 offers that went to kindergarten, second, third, fourth, and sixth grade. And then waiting list in kindergarten, second, third, and fifth. Um, so just, updating those grade slots down there. Um, and then, let's see, I think at the end, Brenda asked about how class sizes were um, managed to make sure there is still enough spaces uh, for residents if they, you know, Pelham kids if they move back, moved into town at the end. Um, and that, you know, we cap the classes at 20 to make, make sure that there's still space and we can honor the way our school is. Oh, okay. um, with it's lovely small classes. Um, and then in the fall discussion um, said we will be greater than three feet in like next to last paragraph, but I I don't think Dr. Morris committed to any of that. He was pretty careful with his probably and maybes. So we might wanna just yeah. make that less of a definite and more of a, we'll try to. Okay, yeah, maybe we expect to be. Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. Okay. Um, and in future agenda planning, um, Ms. Spitzer of Amherst, and then I think Margaret said she'd take the lead for Pelham 
in connecting with uh, Carrie on that. Uh, and then I think that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else on the April 14th minutes? No? All right. I move to approve the April 14th, 2021 minutes as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Sarah Best. Kenny I. Ron? Menino I. Brenda? Barlow I. Margaret? Stancer I. And Hall I. Um, okay. Next uh, public comment. I did not receive any public comment. Um, so I will turn it over to you, Mike, for the superintendent update. Yep. I will be very brief. Uh, so I uh, had a great time. Got to visit with uh, Principal Whiting Jones this morning in Pelham. Uh, walked in, got to see some instrumental music going on outside, which was lovely. Uh, serenaded on my way into Pelham, which is a nice way to come in. And, uh, you know, was able to see a couple of different classrooms as well as, you know, walk through the school and see some of the outdoor spaces. And, you know, it's just really happy faces, you know. Um, and, it, it, you know, I think as compared to maybe the last time we spoke, it feels a little more like um, school. You know, I think... Um, you know, I think, you know, kind of some of the notes that was just were just being commented on, you know, the, the beginning was definitely a very developmentally appropriate a, a response of uh, making sure we had our protocols, both from health and safety, but also just kids not being in school for a while and safety and security, not, not literal physical safety or COVID safety, but just feelings of security and community. Uh, and I walked in rooms and there was math going on, right? And very, you know, the math you would want to see, right, in, in different grade levels. And so, it's really, really nice to see um, the work of the school and just, just the positive energy, you know, that's going on. It just feels really calm as well. And I know that's a sort of funny word to use, but I think the nature of sort of the potting that happens, uh, there's just less movement, you know, between rooms. And, you know, it, it, it does feel really calm in the hallways. Um, not that it was ever crazy in Pelham, but but it, I do feel a substantive difference uh, from from when we were here pre-COVID to now. So compliments to the teachers, uh, all the educators and the staff for doing such a nice job. The only other thing I mentioned, which I sort of loosely talked about at the beginning is I was on a conference call today with Desi and uh, this may be the last virtual meeting, uh, school committee meeting that we're able to have given the governor's uh, orders changing. We'll get confirmation of that in the next couple of weeks, but um, I think anything in the month of June may have to be in person. So, you know, we'll work on, you know, all the logistics on that end uh, and how we're going to do that um, sometime soon. But just uh, just wanted no one to be surprised that the next meeting you see may have a location and that's not a URL. Um, so that, that's gonna be a change for all of us. You know, there are some people advocating for the governor to extend that emergency power for a little bit longer. Um, feedback I heard today is governor's not particularly interested in doing that. Um, and, you know, we'll just have to work. I'll work with the chair on the protocols. Uh, for us, if indeed we are, our next meeting is in person. So I just didn't want it to come as a surprise um, that if you see at the top of the sheet, you, you really want to take a look next time um, instead of just assuming you're going to click through um, five minutes before. And I'll, I'll turn it over. It's okay to Principal Whiting Jones. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I just, I want to echo um, what Superintendent Morris said, and the school definitely feels like good old fashioned school. <laughs> and um, the energy in the building is really good. Um, so we've been, you know, trying to make up for lost time and do a lot of community building practices with our in person students. Um, so we've been doing morning announcements, which are student led, um, and every day we read a poem, which has been. Um, a really nice opportunity for students to get a little bit of practice public speaking. We reaffirm our pause values together every day, recognize student birthdays um, and whatnot. We've also dedicated every Friday to a school spirit dress up day. And we've been rotating through a list of ideas that was generated by students and staff. Um, so last week was dress up like your favorite book character or movie character day. Um, and recently we were all, we were for the very first time this year able to gather as a whole school outside masked and distanced um, to introduce the Georgia Malcolm Social Justice Award and to surprise um, Miss Georgia and you know mark the moment for her, her graduation. I wanted to share with you a project 
that our sixth graders have been doing. And it's, it's pretty amazing. So they've been working with their peers at Fort River on a civic literacy project. And the students were able to choose what it was they wanted to study and learn more about. Um, so, so our class at Pelham chose that they wanted to learn about a proposed construction project in Northampton. Um, it was discovered that the site of the roundabout that was being proposed was on, on top of what was it, um, an ancient indigenous village. Um, and so our students and staff really, um, really got into the grassroots organizing. So they, they invited experts in to learn about archeology span and indigenous people and legislation and, and city planning. Um, you know, they, they designed and wrote petitions and made flyers and, um, you know, met with uh, community organizers and they spoke at public meetings. And uh, just this week, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation announced that they are going to pause that construction project in order to reflect and take a more culturally inclusive um, approach. So our sixth graders, you know, really got to see that community organizing and civic engagement like in a really tangible way. Um, so it's it's really exciting. Um, and then the last update that I'll share with you, um, as many of you know, I will be leaving Pelham School at the end of this year. Um, it's an unexpected event in a year of unexpected events. Um, so I'll be moving with my family to New York City um, and I'm trying to get excited about that. I know you all know that I'm a, you know, I'm a Western Mass girl and I'm a nature person. Um, so I'm trying to think about all the amazing restaurants that I'll be able to go to at some point. Um, and, you know, but this is, this has been a really unique year to be an educator. And as I said to the staff, I just, I can't imagine having, having navigated it with a better crew of people. Um, the staff and the students and the families in Pelham have been extraordinarily supportive and welcoming. Um, and all said and done, I think it's been a pretty amazing year. Um, so I'm looking forward to wrapping up the year with the staff and students um, in a really joyful celebratory way. And I want to also make myself available and supportive for the transition um, for who, whoever will occupy the office next. I wanna make that feel as seamless as possible. All right, thank you. Any questions for Lee? All right. Well, I, you know, I for one will be really sad to see you go. I completely understand that life can take you in unexpected directions, but I mean, it really was a hell of a year. And it just seems like from the very beginning, you just came in with your whole self and gave a lot to the job for a shorter period of time than what you expected and then what we wanted. Um, but you really did give a lot in this one year. And I really appreciate that. All right, next up, new and continuing business. Um, first item is the... Uh, superintendent evaluation tool. Um, so this, uh, sorry, I, I always have to ask this. We need to vote that we are gonna use this tool. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, so or, Margaret, do you have something smarter to say than, I, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, I, I would just like to say that at the um, joint region, Amherst meeting last night, um, we we voted to accept this with um, one change. And that is the elimination of items 19 and 20. Um, the feeling was they're sort of redundant. Um, you know, you've already sort of done these things. And so we voted to eliminate those two uh, items. So, um, I don't know what Pelham wants to do, but, but I will share that with you. Oh, okay. That is good to know. I just, um, Mike, from your perspective, does it matter if we deviate a little from the instrument that Desi puts out there? No, it doesn't matter for you. Okay. Flexible. We had that. Yeah. We had a brief conversation, uh, yeah. last night, um, as Ms. Dancer said, and 
you know, I think whatever streamline it makes sense for the kitty is totally, I'm very comfortable with. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, if that's the case, and then, you know, given how we tried to have the goals for the three committees aligned, it does, from my perspective, it seems like it does make sense then to also have the evaluation instrument aligned in the same way. So, okay. um, all right. Any, any questions on the evaluation tool before we vote on it? Margaret, yep. I, I might just add for anyone who hasn't done the evaluation before, um, it's a survey monkey is the tool being used. Um, and, and I just mentioned the timeline. So there will be a joint meeting of all three committees to hear, uh, Dr. Morris's presentation of the artifacts for the evaluation. And that will be, I think on the 15th, um, we will have one week to complete the evaluation. So they will be due on the 22nd. And then um, Chair McDonald and I will be, and probably she'll do most of it, sort of compiling everything, creating a report and that will be presented on the 29th of May for a vote um, on the final evaluation. Okay, did you mean June 29th? Yeah, sorry. Okay. All right, great. Yeah. No, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And I guess, I guess if I'm channeling Peter Demling, I would also say if you have not done the evaluation before, like this, tool is the outline for it, but you should not feel too bound by it mm -hmm. as you as you fill it out. Um, um, in terms of like the areas for being able to write freely and um, you know share your actual thoughts. Okay. Um, I move to accept this evaluation instrument last items 19 and 20. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, Sarah Best. Kenny, I. Ron? Medina, I. Brenda? Oh, you're on mute. There we go. I, sorry. That's okay. Margaret? Stancer, I. And Hall, I. Uh, okay, thanks. And thanks for that background, Margaret. Mm -hmm. um, all right, stimulus grant update. This will be very brief. Uh, the I was on a DESE conference call today. They said that um, dollar amounts and some information will be come out Monday, the 24th, uh, for the ESSER three or stimulus grant funds. Uh, there'll be some webinars towards the end of next week. Doug, I'm telling you this live because I didn't get a chance to loop to you on Thursday and Friday. So, you know, at some point that uh, Thursday or Friday, they'll have multiple opportunities for webinars. Um, I think uh, they won't even be able to accept grant applications till some point in June. And we have till October to fulfill, to do an application. Uh, the one thing I do know is that there is a public engagement process required, probably involves a public hearing or something like that. And their strong recommendation was not to be in a rush to figure this out, um, how to spend it, because there's lots of unknowns as we head towards next year. Uh, and they had a recommendation, not a, not a requirement, but a recommendation really to think about this, uh, engaging the communities uh, in the fall, the early fall, uh, when people are more attuned and people know what the plans are for the school. So um, that's what I know at this point, but we'll find out a little more next week and then increasingly more. And I'll share that with the committee uh, as the information comes to us. Okay, great. Any, any questions on the stimulus grant? All right, so more on that later. Um, discussion of sixth grade moving over to the middle school. Sure, so I, what I'd like to do is, is, and I know we're short on time, but I think I can briefly summarize the discussion at the regional level, Sarah Bess and Margaret, please do jump in with what I missed. Um, but we've talked about this now twice at the regional level, including last night, so it's fresh in our minds, uh, as well as two weeks prior. And you know, I think a couple important contextual factors. The first is that um, for years and years and years that I went to four town meetings, uh, the four towns being Amherst, Pelham, Leverett, and Shutesbury, uh, we talked about the regional budget. Um, there would be elected officials, not necessarily from the school committee every year who would say, can we fit all the sixth graders in the middle school? Can we fit all the middle schoolers in the high school? And it was really framed as an efficiency perspective. And every time myself or my predecessor uh, say, no, I don't think we can, but you know, I don't, you know, 
it's like kind of like not not sure. But in, enrollments had declined. So in 2018, uh, I kept on getting that question. Enrollments were going down. I requested at that point for the regional district uh, to have a facilities use study to be able to answer those questions with an architect on board who could do uh, real analysis. And what he found, or they found, I should say, was that uh, the middle school could not fit in the high school without spending um, tens of millions of dollars. Um, however, sixth grade could fit in the middle school um, without uh, without an expense. There may be preferred expenses, but that the sixth grade could fit in the middle school um, without without a financial implications, at least on the operational side, right? There, there may be some questions about the multiple districts and all that, but we wouldn't need to build anything or renovate anything. We had enough space at the middle school. And that that's sort of consistent with what we thought, you know, this school, I mean, now, you know, used to host over 600 students. If the sixth graders came, it would be under 600 students. So we, we sort of had an assumption that that might be the case, but, um, you know, they wrote a 600 page document with lovely maps and all that. And, you know, that links on our website, um, and so after that, at the April 9th meeting of 2019 at the region, we created a middle school grade span advisory board. And so that was a group of about 25 um, individuals, included teachers in middle school, the elementary from Shoots Baron Leverett, and Pelham sixth grade teacher was, Margaret was involved in that as well. Um, parents and the community members uh, also were part of that group. And the goal was to see, you know, what do we think? What are the factors? It wasn't to make a recommendation, but what are the factors uh, that we should be considering that group made a 50 page report. So we're good at accumulating paper um, that has lots of valuable content and input on it. Um, I think Allison McDonald was a school committee rep on that group. And um, that also is sits on our website. And if anyone can't find it, just let me know, I can send it. I think importantly, we also visited JFK Middle School, which is in Northampton. It's a sixth through eighth grade middle school. And I honestly, more than even the facilitated work, seeing a school the way the kids frankly, look like our kids, the curriculum looks like our curriculum in, in broad ways. And being able to talk to, we talked to parents, the PGO came in, uh, we talked to teachers and educators throughout the day, as well as the principal got a tour, walked in classrooms. That was really eye-opening for the people who went on that group, uh, went on that tour. So fast forward, we were supposed to bring this back and present and then the uh, pandemic hit. And so everything slowed down quite a bit. Um, but this report was presented two weeks ago at the regional school committee that the group worked on. And really the primary factors that we were considering are one, what are the educational and well-being factors? So there's some very real implications. You know, the research is, is non sort of unconclusive. Uh, we have a very atypical model. So less than 20% of schools in Massachusetts as well as the country have a K to six, seven, eight, 912 model. It was much more common in the 60s and 70s uh, in a junior high model. And as the junior high model went, uh, was, was found to be lacking, places went to a middle school model, added sixth grade so that the students would have three years, that it wasn't a quote unquote commuter school, that students weren't either just coming or going, but they built a more of a relationship um, from adolescent. But it's really hard to study that in a really empiric way. So, you know, you could read, you know, research that sort of hints at one thing, hints at another, but as opposed to like late start or something like that, where it's an easier problem to study, this is a really complicated one because a number of factors unrelated to grade span configuration are really hard to parse out. Um, at the Amherst level, space is a huge consideration. Um, so that's driving a lot of the thinking at Amherst as well as timing. So we're not at all thinking of, of pushing sixth graders uh, district wide to the middle school uh, for next year, but I know, you know the conversation was can we make a decision uh, at the regional level, you know, roughly in the next eight to nine months so that if it's going to happen the following year, we have enough time to plan and put together a program that we feel good about. So the region, uh, and I use this language intentionally because it was used at the meeting, uh, assented to open the door for the elementary committees to see if elementary groups, if ele excuse me, to see if elementary committees wanted to explore this. There was no, um, imposition on elementary committees to do anything at all. Really, it's about the door being opened. And if no one greets the door, then that's that's all the feedback the region needs. If there are communities who do want to at least look at this more closely, the region is open to that discussion, even if not all the towns uh, would participate. I think particularly notable was uh, in Shutesbury and Leverton, um, the representatives talked about they didn't think those particular towns would be quickly move their sixth graders to a middle school, but they were very open to the concept of a three-year middle school, even if their students did not participate at the beginning. So, you know, it doesn't have to be all or none. It could be 
It could be somewhere in between uh, one town or two towns that were interested. So that's sort of where we are. So the question to pose to you, which I don't think you need to, don't feel like there's urgency to say yay, yay or nay tonight, um, is you know how does Pelham feel about this? You know what are some factors that Pelham would want to think about? You know, in my sense, Amherst has some really acute space issues that don't exist in the other three towns, so they may be on a little bit of a faster timeline because um, the urgency is there. Whereas the other towns, I think, um, space wouldn't be the primary consideration uh, in terms of considering sixth grade to middle schools. It would be solely about the educational program and and you know com that comparison. So Sarah Bess, Margaret, how'd I do? What am I missing? I think you covered it pretty well. I mean, region, we just said, yes, we're open to having this discussion. Amherst seemed like they were ready to be having their discussion in their uh, elementary committee. Um, Leverett and Shootsbury said, sure, go ahead, but we're probably not interested. And uh, Pelham said, we're talking about it tomorrow. We'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah, and so I think, you know, in terms of grade and size, again, because in 18 minutes, we really will have to close the meeting tonight. And there's a couple other things we want to talk about. I wonder, you know, if it's okay with Chair Hall, if we just give everyone a minute to comment at least some of their th initial thoughts. So at least everyone in the committee can hear what each other's thinking. Uh, if there is the desire to come back and talk more, we could schedule another meeting certainly in June, or we could tack it on to the existing joint meetings um, that already exist. Uh, but I don't want anyone to tell them to feel like tonight's the night where you have to decide whether you want to engage. Because I don't personally, I don't believe there's that time. From my perspective, there's not that same time pressure uh, for Pelham as there is in Amherst. Um, I think it's much more analogous to Shootsbury and Leverett, where um, I think probably a, a thoughtful longitudinal discussion is probably in Pelham's best interest. Yep. Yeah, I think I think that's great. I think we can go around the horn and yeah, just to be clear that like what you your opinions, anything you express tonight, you don't have to stick to that thing. You can certainly evolve and it's more about just whether or not you want to discuss it and initial thoughts, but we're, you know, I anyway will not hold you to anything. Um, well, I don't, maybe Sarah Best and or, or Margaret, maybe one of you could go first only because you've been engaged in this issue a little bit longer and then it would give the rest of us a minute to um. just well, I guess my feeling is it would be appropriate to have a discussion. Okay. Um, I don't think I would say tonight that I would agree or not agree that we should do it, but I do think that having the discussion would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Sarah Best. Um, so, I mean, sure, I think we can have the discussion. I think that's fine. I think more discussion is probably better than less discussion, um, but I am not currently interested in sending sixth graders to the middle school. I don't think it is the right choice um, for Pelham at this time, nor do I think it's necessarily the right choice for kids of that age. Um, my personal children right now bracket that. So I have a uh, one ending fifth grade and one just finishing seventh grade. So I kind of bookend it. And um, with kids who I, were very fortunate, I have very high functioning articulate children and both of them have said that they do not feel like that this would be a good idea. Um, so I, those are my personal feelings. But like I said, I think having the conversation and have, being able to engage people about it is perfectly good. I am not the only person with an opinion. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have discussion and we'll have open ears in it. But at this moment, I do not feel like it is a good choice for our children or our school. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Brenda. Um, okay. Well, um, you know, I went to a small school similar to Pelham and I was one of those sixth graders who went to the seventh. And so I guess I, I think that, you know, different kids are different. Certainly my fifth grader would probably love to go to seventh grade. That small town uh, school is just he's outgrowing it. And so I think that there's different kids who have different needs. One thing that I just am kind of chewing on and thinking about is, you know, if all of the Umers kids are all sixth grade at the middle school together, the seventh and eighth graders, then they're going to be at a different rate of development than the Pelham kids. And then when the Pelham kids join later, it might really impact their social groups and their, their developments. So I just think we might want to just consider that and maybe talk about it in more in depth. Okay, great, thank you. Ron. 
Well, I think it should be discussed. I've, we've talked about this for about three years. And every time I've said, when will the Pelham parents have a chance to chime in? I think this discussion should have Pelham parents. What do the Pelham parents want? I want to know that. I don't know what they want. Maybe they're all in favor of the sixth grade movie. Maybe they're not. I'd like to hear from that, hear from them, have an open meeting, have a hearing or whatever. And uh, maybe the middle school, including sixth grade, is a popular model, but popular doesn't make something right. And then I've expressed my reservations on safety. I mean, I don't want to be a, a hovering par ex-parent, but uh, Pelham, for example, Pelham has never had a problem with um, uh, vaping, but the middle school closed their bathrooms because there was vaping problems. I don't want our sixth graders to be exposed to vaping. Uh, and other other issues of safety that I'm concerned about. The academics are, are, are debatable. So I think we should have a discussion on all these issues, including parental involvement. I want to see some kind of parental involvement. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I will be brief. Yes, we should clearly talk about it. And people have a lot of opinions. And I think as we learn more, um, I think that will help guide the conversation. So yes, I think we should talk about it. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll, we'll just, oh, sorry, Mike, go ahead. I was going to say, this is good feedback for me, I think, because I am working with a task, uh, two school committee members from Amherst, where we have a little working group and we met this week. I think some of the engagement pieces in Amherst, uh, you know, I'd be happy to bring back to the Pelham School Committee to see if, you know, that made sense. Like, you know, we may be looking at a survey or something that, you know, so the Pelham doesn't have to duplicate the efforts uh, or maybe adjust some of the questions because it's a different community. But I think, um, you know, this gives me what I need to then go back and I can, you know, perhaps work through the chair uh, with engagements as they come up. And nothing's going to happen next week, right? There's enough other things that's going on at the end of the year. We're not, uh, at least I'm not interested in, in trying to push uh, that button, but I think this gives uh, gives me what I need, and I can definitely bring it back to the full committee. But you know, if the, if the committee agrees, just work through the chair with any of the pieces we're working on in Amherst, and and can bring them back to Pelham. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Um, okay, next up is principal search. Ms. Car Mike, do you want to start? Or okay, no, no, it's right to Ms. Cunningham. Thanks All right, for being Cunningham, here, Ms. Cunningham. You're up. Hi, thank you everyone. So as Principal Whiting Jones just mentioned, she will be leaving at the end of the school year. And I'd like to thank you, Ms. Whiting Jones, for all the work you have done at Pelham this past year, your contribution to the planning and resumption of learning for students, the collaborative spirit you've shown with the staff and your colleagues have really been appreciated. And so with that said, we've posted the position for an interim principal with a closing date of May 28th. We will contact um, staff, caregivers, and you know anyone who's interested to ask for volunteers to join both the screening and the interview committee. I know some individuals uh, have already reached out to me to say that they're interested in being on any committee possible and uh, in volunteering in any way possible. We currently do have applicants and we have uh, individuals who have reached out to express interest in applying for the position. Okay, that's great. Can you can you give a sense just of timing? So it closes, the the posting closes May twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that things go as planned, and they almost never do, what would be your like, without going through? I mean, you know, I know last time around you had all the specific dates for each milestone, but I guess maybe skipping ahead to like when when do you think we'd get to the place where? Um, you'd like to make an announcement for an interim? Well, we are looking for the person to start July 1st. Okay. So, so we, we are hoping okay. to make the announcement much, uh, much earlier than that. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Any other questions for Ms. Cunningham? Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I have every confidence last time around you really that your process was really great. I know this will be a little bit different, but um, I appreciate your work on this. Okay, uh, third quarter budget. So 
Uh, actually, I have good news. This may be the best uh, third quarter report you ever see from me. Um, hopefully, it will be. Uh, uh, the short story is with the with the spinning uh, freeze that we put in place by virtue of a lot of unknowns in what we might experience as far as expenses. Uh, you know, that's held our budget, uh, you know, under uh, the expected. Uh, so normally, the third quarter, you'd like to be at about seventy five percent of your spending. We're under that by quite a bit. We're at about sixty seven percent. Uh, the couple of areas like special education and facilities where we thought we might have extraordinary expenses relative to the pandemic have uh, not proved to, to materialize. So that's been helpful as far as keeping us under budget. And I expect us to finish the year under budget and and uh, and be able to you know meet the needs as, as we go in person as we have over the last uh, few weeks. So I think that it's good news. And I'll stop there and ask, answer any questions you might have. Okay, great. Any questions for Doug? Can you just say that exact whole thing over again, exactly as you said it? I mean, that was great. <laughs> just full repeat. <laughs> we'll have to go on the. We'll have to go to the video and. and okay, um, fine. Um, all right. Well, thanks for that. Um, okay, so future agenda planning. Um, so we have some evaluation related meetings coming up, I guess for the next Pelham only meeting um, in June, that would be, um, we talk about sixth grade to the middle school. What, uh, I'm blanking on other things. I feel like we've just already mentioned things that I'm missing. That would really be it. Sarah Best. I think we were gonna talk more about whatever was happening with the um, COVID money Oh, the, the grant funding, the stimulus grant. Yeah, um, if, if there was an update on that, okay. but I, I think that might be the only column. Okay, only yeah. thing. And I wonder um, if I could jump in just whether the sixth grade piece there might be an interest in, not the region but the elementary, Amherst committee of doing a joint meeting on that topic. Just because if we're both if both groups are planning engagements, mm -hmm. it might make you might. We all worked well together, right? And so it might uh, be an efficient use of your all time to to be able to talk about it. Not that you're doing the same thing, but if if mm -hmm. we link the engagements together, uh, it might make it, things a little easier for you all. Um, so you know, okay. not that it has to happen, but if you wanted to connect with Allison, I know um, she might be amenable to having that um, at least that topic be a joint topic, since it's it's got the same end in mind, and it's not that either committee has to make the same decisions, but in terms of like had engaged the community because I heard that from almost everyone who spoke that there was an interest in engaging uh, the Pelham community. They're having the same conversation in Amherst, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I think if again, if there's like survey tools and FAQs and website, like why would we not make that same thing accessible to Pelham, um, Pelham families and, and to you all? So, you know, just a, just food for thought doesn't have to be, but um, it might make sense. Um, not really talking about the decision, but about the engagement. Sarah, okay. the old topic yeah. of the integration of technology into the curriculum that's been raised before. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and we could, yeah, that, I think that would be a Pelham only thing. And then, you know, maybe what we could do too, depending on what, if we do something joint with just Amherst, that maybe we would have a Pelham thing before or after, if that was going to be a more brief meeting. Um, okay. Brenda. I'm not sure if this makes sense depending on the timing, but I've had some families ask questions about if mask mandates will change as our protocols in the schools. And I don't know, if, you know, depending on when the meeting is, if that makes sense. But so oh, okay. if interested if students are going to continue to wear masks or if there's going to be a change on that based on the governor's announcements. I mean, my understanding was at least through the end of the year, we were sticking with our current policies as already written am i yeah mike go ahead so um you, uh, the all three committees passed a face covering policy that um right now is governing that um and so if the committee wanted to get together to discuss that you know i'm just being cautious because this is not an agenda item and i think you appropriately brought it up like is this something you want to talk about and, and if that's something that this committee wanted to talk about, then you know, we could definitely put on an agenda before the end of the year. Um, but it would really be a policy specific discussion about, I can't remember the letters, but I looked at them the other day. Um, 
but it would be about the face covering policy and, and when it would end, particularly in the outside part, which I think is what you were referencing. So again, that's for the committee if they wanna take up that topic. I guess I'll just say, I don't think it's necessary. That's really helpful, so, so I can answer. We already have a policy in place to the end of the school year and that won't change. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so stay tuned on various dates of joint things on the evaluation, potentially joint on uh, grade six, and then some Pelham only time as well. Okay, anything else on agenda planning? Okay, I have a few warrants, but I can get them done in time. Um, I authorized by my signature uh, to payroll in the amount of $58,683.33 um, for the warrant dated April 21st, 2021. And I signed that on April 20th, 2021. I authorized by my signature to payables in the amount of $32,709.85 for the warrant dated April 22nd, 2021. That included general fund expenses of $31,884.85, grant fund expenses of $825, and, and grant fund expenses of $825. And I signed that one on April 22nd. Um, I authorized by my signature to payroll in the amount of $67,781.76. That was for a warrant dated May 5th, 2021, and I signed it on May 3rd, 2021. And finally, I, I authorized payroll in the amount of $59,602.47. That was for a warrant dated May 19th, 2021. And I signed that on May 18th, 2021. Um, we don't have any gifts. We're in, on time. I sound like an auctioneer but we did it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And welcome all of you to join us at eight o'clock for if you have questions about the vaccine for yourself or for your children, or you know other people, we have a bunch of people much smarter than me uh, who are gonna be talking about this. Doctors include Dickinson Bay State and, and local pediatricians who are gonna talk about very real issues um, and questions that we've, we've we're, I'm getting, we're getting, and that people have actually emailed in. So really looking forward to the event and, and learning from them. So I appreciate you allowing me to- Where's the learning? Minute. Where's the link? Uh, I will put it on the screen, actually. But uh, it was uh, it was emailed out to all families and stuff. But they're really, really good. Um, Representative Dom is also who's the representative for Pelham. Will also be present. So if you give me one second, I will make sure that you get it. I mean, you can do your things about, you know. But I'll I'll, I'll get it up in a second. All right. Uh, I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Sarah Best. Kenny, aye. Ron. Manina, aye. Brenda. Barlow, aye. Margaret. Uh, Stancer, aye. And Hall, aye. We are adjourned and the link is in the chat. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank Take you. care. Good night.